Hi everybody, I'm Doug Cook, Director of News and Media Relations with Bowdoin College here with Dighton Spooner, Senior Associate Director of Career Planning, is that right? Correct. And also a member of uh, BAFTA, the British Academy of Film and Television Arts, and a member of the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, of course the entity that awards the Emmys here in this country. Right. So we're here to talk about the issue that has evolved around the announcement of the Oscar nominations, of which there were no people of color. Now, I understand this is sort of the end result in that you say this issue starts farther upstream from this. Yes, I think you have to work uh, a number of steps back from this. Uh, by that, I mean there are not that many executives working at studios who can green light movies. The number of producers who might have overall deals with studios that allow them to have the resources to, to develop projects. Um, and so these are really where the issues begin where there is, one, a lack of people developing projects that are diverse and speak to a broad range of uh, experiences that people have in the United States. And, um, and then you also have a lack of membership in the academy making decisions about who gets uh, nominated and then who gets uh, awards. Does the same issue exist in the UK? Um, it probably does. Um, I think that it's a very different market. It's a much smaller market, though an influential one. Um, uh, but I think, yes, the same issues exist there. Now, in addition to your membership in these academies, you worked in various aspects of the entertainment industry before coming to Bowdoin, some three decades worth, is that right? Yes. Um, what was your experience as it relates to diversity or the lack thereof? Well, I, I think there's one story that I think for me speaks to some of the issues that we're seeing around the Oscars. And I remember returning to the United States having uh, worked for Granada Television in London. And I was interviewing, looking for that next opportunity back in Los Angeles. And I had one uh, interview and the executive said to me, um, well, we all get along very well here at, at this company and we're unsure as to whether or not you'll fit in. Now, I had already been in the television and film industry for 20 years at that time and, and really was drawn to the work partly because of the need to collaborate and work together to create anything. And what I was subtly being told was that we're probably all white here and we don't think you will fit into our team. And so I knew right at that point that uh, I wasn't going to be offered a job at this company. Mm -hmm. That's really something that takes place in the business that I think then leads to the issues that we're seeing further down the stream when we're looking at Oscars and awards. What should happen? What is the remedy here? Well, I, I think the remedy is uh, a much more diverse population of people making decisions about movies that are green light and also movies that, uh, that are developed. Um, and if you had a more diverse population there, then I think you solve a lot of these other problems that we see. And I would think that since the demographics of the United States is changing dramatically, and we're seeing that in the political sphere as it relates to voting, um, we need to be telling more diverse stories for a more diverse population. And I think in some ways that will also then speak uh, internationally because really the film industry is developing progr uh, programming both uh, television and films for a overseas market as well. Um, but I think as we make more diverse programming both film and television, we then also are making stories that connect to an international audience that uh, better. What, if any, overlap is there with these issues as they pertain to the entertainment industry and your work here trying to find career paths for students? Um, I think that the television and film industry, and I advise students interested in going into, into careers in the arts and communications field, all these fields are very competitive. And they're even more competitive uh, for students of color. And I think that what it says uh, to me in my work with them is that they have to make sure they're getting the internships that prepare them to be able to compete for the entry level jobs when they graduate. Uh, that they are taking courses um, in subjects that also 
help to um, give them uh, the background to be able to successfully enter the field. Um, um, and that they connect with alumni in these fields and build relationships so that when they are ready to graduate and ready to, en to enter the field, they have networks into these fields because that's what's critical, is developing a sophisticated network of people that you can contact and speak to for advice and guidance, but also who can tell you when that entry level job is, is there for you to be able to compete for. Titan Spooner, thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you.